The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Rediscovering Germany webinar. We are delighted that you could join us today on this Friday. Uh, my name is Leslie Harrelson. I run the DAAD, the German Academic Exchange Service Information Center in San Francisco, and I will be moderating today's webinar. We are joined by two colleagues in New York. Katja Kurtz is the University Relations Coordinator coordinator at Cultural Vistas, and Peter Kerrigan is the deputy director of the DAD regional headquarters in New York, and he's also the director of marketing for North America. So they will be talking to you about the variety of programs that each of our organizations offers. Um, we hope to share with you a lot of information today about different funding programs and programs that our respective organizations offer uh, in Germany, and it's for everything from undergraduates through faculty, for varied lengths and different specialties, whether it's doing a short summer research internship for science and engineering or a year-long Bosch fellowship for uh, young professionals. There's really a, a variety of offerings out there, and we're delighted that you could join us today uh, to hear about them. Uh, for those of you that haven't participated in a webinar or not one like this before, I just wanted to start with a brief introduction of, uh, about how to use this webinar software. You should have something like this control panel that you see on the right. Uh, you should have that on the right of your screen. And um, we're not, we don't have uh, an attendee list because there's too many in attendance that would be um, um, too lengthy. So we don't have that, but um, this grab tab right here allows you to maximize and minimize the size of your control panel. So if it's taking up too much space, um, you can click this and it will decrease in size. Uh, the audio pane right here, it shows how you are listening to the webinar. If at any point you lose audio, sometimes if you just toggle between these two radio buttons, that um, can do the trick. And if you have any questions, if you lose audio for some reason or you're not hearing very well, um, feel free to chat with me and I can try to troubleshoot as, as the uh, webinar progresses. And you can do that via the questions pane. This is how you submit questions not only to the panelists but also to me if you need some tech troubleshooting. So you just type your question in here and click send. And I encourage you to send any questions as long as you, as soon as you have them in your mind, feel free to send them to, to me, and I will collect them for the Q&A session at the end. So how it's going to work is my colleagues uh, Katya and Peter will give a presentation, and then at the end we will have a moderated Q&A. So feel free to submit your questions at any time, and we will get to them at the end. So. Um, with that, I am now going to pass the mic uh, and the screen over to uh, Peter Kerrigan in our regional office in New York, as well as Katya. So um, welcome, Peter. Welcome, Katya. And thanks again to all of you for joining us on this Friday. Thank you. Actually, I would just before we get started, um, just want to just say briefly that um, we at DAD North American at Cultural Vistas, of course, are thinking of all of our colleagues and friends in Boston who are having a very different experience today than we are right now. If any of you are um, calling in from the Boston area or have friends and loved ones there, please, you know, think that or know that we are, of course, thinking about all of you and are here if there's anything we can do um, for support, uh, however we want to define that. So that having been said, Kachi, would you like to get us started? Yes, sure. And thank you so much, Peter, for your kind words. So welcome all of you to uh, our Rediscovering Germany seminar um, webinar, um, which we're very happy to host together. And just to tell you a little bit about Patria Vistas, um, who we are. Vistas is a nonprofit organization um, that does internships abroad. Uh, and a variety of programs, all internship-based, um, have including a work-based um, element for um, Americans going abroad in the world and also for international visitors coming to the US. So we do both inbound J1 processing and placements and also outbound programs and placements. Uh, and we've existed for um, over 50 years, over 60 years now. Um, some of us, some of you might know us as um, our former pre-merger selves, which uh, were a AIPT and CDS International which merged um, two years ago and now are cultural vistas. And since the merger, we've also expanded our, our programs a lot and will continue to do so. And um, 
I'm representing the German Academic Exchange Service, DAD. In fact, that beautiful photo was taken from our building. We're housed in the German Consulate here in New York. Uh, we have two mandates, one of which is to represent German higher education and research around the world, in our case in the U.S. and Canada, and also to provide scholarships and funding to help facilitate mobility at all levels, from undergraduate through including senior faculty. And I think the numbers speak for themselves. As you can see, DAD is an organization which is publicly funded, um, meaning through German taxpayers, supported over 100,000 people to go to and from Germany last year. Thank you. And we should say that we're very jealous of that view from your office, certainly. Um, we also have an office in New York City where our headquarters are, which I forgot to mention earlier, and another office in Maryland and DC. Okay, and, and I think I'm supposed to talk about this. So uh, we're going to talk a bit about, just to give you a sense of the program, a bit about some of the reasons why we think Germany would be an interesting destination for you or for your students, and then talk about, probably in most of the presentation will be spent talking about the opportunities, which I think is the main reason you're on the call today. Um, first of all, as a study destination, uh, there are a variety of reasons that we, we could um, list here for you. Uh, I think one of the most interesting things is, first of all, the quality of the educational system, the wide variety of opportunities, um, the strength of the German economy, et cetera. Um, and for those of your students who do not speak German, that there actually is a large number of degree programs and study abroad programs in, um, that are being offered in English as well. And um, just logistically, uh, that Germany is, in fact, in the center of Europe. There are amazing reasons to stay in Germany to see Germany, but there are also wonderful reasons to travel beyond the borders and see the rest of Europe. Okay. Katja, maybe you could tell us a bit of why about interning in Germany. Uh, why should why should students intern in Germany? So what we have experienced um, is that um, interning in Germany um, allows people to get a two in one in a way because you because students get both the work experience um, and the cultural immersion and arguably cultural immersion possibly even more so because they are um, they're not part of a group of other students in general but they are really an, an intern. Um, in a, within the German company, so they are much, much more uh, immersed in, in the cultural life and the, in a professional um, situation than than possibly university students are. So it's a it's it's a great combination of both um, of both work experience and cultural immersion, and also why intern abroad. Um, the, it's a great opportunity for students to build a global professional network, to gain skills and trends in the field that they can then can bring back to the US and apply in their professional development. Um, and also the third major reason that we advocate is um, that they get to practice a professional, German as a professional um, language in their internship placements. And I think a lot of those um, reasons, Katja, thanks for um, illustrating those, apply to why research makes sense also for uh, either you or your students. And um, for those of you who are very active in research, particularly internationally, um, I don't need to reiterate some of the information that's on the slide here, but I think what's important to note is, is that, um, that research is quite important. It is uh, funded quite heavily at the federal level. Uh, if you look at uh, the amount of funding spent on, on research and development versus GNP, um, it is quite high uh, in comparison to many other countries in the industrialized world. And uh, as many of you probably know, uh, it does enjoy Germany, uh, uh, a very strong tradition in science and, uh, and, and research. And as, as such, there is a very strong um, and very dynamic infrastructure to support research opportunities. So now we're going to move on to those actual opportunities. And um, you'll see as we go through these slides that we're going to do them in blocks. Katya will talk about opportunities that emanate from her organization, and then I'll um, add some color to that by, by talking about programs that come from DAD. And we're going to do this in blocks of undergraduates, graduates, um, 
and faculty, well, PhD candidates as well. And I just so, want to jump in here real yeah. quick, um, Peter, and say that you're going to notice that we're going to be going through these very quickly because we have a lot of opportunities and we don't want to take up all of our time just talking at you. So we're just going to briefly mention each of these and uh, we are recording this webinar so it will be available for you to view later and we will also distribute a PDF of the presentation to everyone that um, is in attendance. So no need to scribble things down or worry if you miss something. Um, you can address that in the Q&A and also know that you'll be getting copies of this afterwards. So if you feel like we're going too fast, it's uh, we apologize in advance, but we just want to make sure to get everything out there. So with that, um, take it away, Katya. Great. Thank you so much. So the first program for um, undergrads that I want to share with you is the CBYX program or the Congress Bundestag Youth Exchange for Young Professionals which is a fully funded 12-month exchange program for students in all fields of study to go to Germany and um, it is specifically for students who are interested in a more structured exchange program because it does include a language training, a semester of study, an internship placement and students stay with a host family. So it has a much stronger cultural immersion component than some of the other programs. Um, this, because it is both funded by US Congress and the German Bundestag, um, the participants are also expected to act as informal cultural ambassadors, if you will, and it is also uh, reciprocal. So um, there are Americans going to Germany and there are Germans coming to the US every year. And this program has a strong alumni base as well, so um, it's a great opportunity for students to be involved after they return. One common misconception about this one is that it's only for public policy or political science fields, which is not the case. It's open for all fields of study. Um, and specifically encourages STEM students as well, but in general it's very open to all. Next. The Cachoistas Fellowship is a completely new program that we just launched this year and which we're very happy to share with you. Um, it is a fully funded summer internship placement for students who are traditionally underrepresented in international exchange. So first generation students, uh, STEM majors, uh, minorities, non-traditional students, um, and so on. The focus is on sustainability and we define that very broadly. So it includes both uh, the STEM fields, um, environmental studies, natural resource management, but also other fields like good governance, um, international studies, and so on. Next. The MGIP um, or the Emigre Memorial German Internship Program for the Landtag is the program that we administer. As you will see later, the DAD does the Bundestag program, which is the same just with the Bundestag. Um, so this program with the Landtag is for students who are interested in public policy or related fields uh, and who want to do funded or paid internships in one of Germany's 16 state parliaments. So we place students in the 16 German capitals in the state parliaments and um, placements are possible three times a year for one to three months each. Uh, and what is special about this program is also that it includes or that it welcomes Canadian applicants, not just US applicants. So it can be Canadian students either enrolled in Canadian universities or U Canadian students enrolled um, in US universities. Next. IESTE is the International Association for the Exchange of Students for Technical Experience. And it's an international association and we administer the United States program. So we match students with paid internships exclusively in the technical fields and the sciences. The majority of the programs are um, summer internships, but um, semester and longer internship placements are also not uh, uncommon. Uh, the great thing about this program is that it also accepts international students who are enrolled in un US universities or institutions. Next. The Independent Work um, Abroad program is for students who have independently secured internships in Germany but are not proficient enough in the German bureaucratic system to handle their work authorization process. So we offer support for them for work authorization through this program. Um, we also accept international students who found internships in Germany. And uh, what is important to note here is that work authorization requirements have changed last year um, in August. And now students who do internships in Germany have to be enrolled for the duration of the internship. They cannot be recent graduates anymore. It's much more difficult for recent graduates to get work authorization, so um, this also affects this program. But we found that graduates can easily trans postpone graduation or um, 
if they're on the verge of transferring to a, to a different institution, that's definitely possible. The internship placements, um, again, the visa and um, work authorization requirements um, also affect this program. Um, so intern internship placements apart uh, from the other more specialized programs that I've just shared with you, uh, welcome students from all fields of study for individualized summer and semester placements, um, usually ranging between three and uh, 12 months. And for this program, it's important to know that we select the candidates first and then contact the companies and organizations, uh, public institutions, to offer them an individualized internship in their target career field. So we start with a person and we look for, we find an internship for them in their specific career field. Um, and we have a vast professional network in Germany that allows us to accommodate a variety of fields uh, from technical business, sciences, uh, finance, nonprofit, and also arts and humanities. So this is a great program for students who, um, who just are looking for an individual internship placement in Germany. Next. The WIS program or the Work Immersion Study program um, is funded by the State of Baden-Württemberg Foundation. Um, and it's, it offers fully funded summer internships and language training in southern Germany and Baden-Württemberg for um, vocationally qualified students. What are vocationally qualified students? Um, as you might know or might not know um, is that the German definition of vocational fields is slightly different than the American one. So a lot of um, course study courses in the US that students can do in two year or four year um, institutions would, would qualify as a vocational field. So students from these um, fields might apply for this program. There are many from public administration, accounting, audiovisual design, IT, communication, automobile industry, um, and so on. We can, if you're interested in that, we can definitely explore that more in the FAQ. Okay, so thank you. We go from one acronym, WISP, to MGIP. Um, as just a, a reminder that if you do have any questions or queries, please um, send them um, to our moderator. Uh, using the control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. So to uh, finish up the group of opportunities for undergraduate students, I'm going to start off by mentioning a program that Katja has already uh, mentioned or alluded to, and that is our MGA program. And the difference between ours and um, that of cultural business is that the Bundestag is, as the name states, but the uh, internship is in the German parliament. Um, what is also interesting to note here is that the, the language level that is required uh, is fluid because the language of business in the German parliament is, of course, German. This is a fantastic internship opportunity for students in some of the disciplines that you see mentioned here, political science, et cetera, et cetera. It is two months, and also to keep in mind that we work according to the calendar of the Bundestag, which may not necessarily be in sync with your academic calendar, but it does come funded, as you can see, as do most of our, our opportunities. Also, uh, piggybacking onto a comment that Katya made, first of all, all of the almost, I would say, 99% of the opportunities that I will be talking about apply to universities in the U.S. and in Canada. We don't have a distinction there because our office represents the U.S. and Canada in conjunction with our information center in San Francisco and our information center in Toronto. And also, uh, if you have international students who are matriculated in a degree program at your university, they are also eligible to apply for almost all of our funding opportunities, provided that they have been in that degree program for at least two years. But consult our website for more details. The next opportunity is also an internship opportunity, and this has become by far our most sought-after opportunity. And this is called RISE, Research Internships in Science and Engineering and it is for the fields that are on your screen in front of you. What's wonderful about this is that a student uh, applies online, applies for up to three internship opportunities in December, and is matched up with a PhD candidate who would serve as his or her host to work in that laboratory uh, in Germany for up to three months in the summer. Um, depending upon the research opportunity is really depending upon whether or not the student needs to speak German. Many of the opportunities are offered in English, but we do provide funding also for language courses if that is so desired, and these opportunities are also funded. One of, I guess, our, our flagship program, in addition to RISE for the undergraduates, um, is the Undergraduate Scholarship, appropriately named, 
And that is a funding opportunity for students either to, to study abroad, to do an internship, or to complete some type of research which is tying in with their senior thesis. Um, this is actually a, a pretty healthy uh, amount of funding. Uh, the students apply, um, and basically, and we'll talk about this a little later in terms of the application process, but um, at this level, there are few opportunities that are specifically for Europe or for Western Europe, and uh, this is one of them. In addition, there's funding available if a student would like, and this is available to all students, sophomores, seniors, and graduate students, um, to pursue a course uh, in Germany for this summer. Um, these courses are, are offered in German and uh, require that the students have uh, at least two years of college German um, at their disposal. What's interesting about this, uh, this program, this funding scheme, is that the students can pursue whether it be biology or psychology or chemistry and do that in German at a German university for the summer. So we're zipping along here. I'm going to pass the baton back to Katya, who will get us started on our graduate opportunities. Thank you. So one of, one of our main fellowships uh, for graduates who want to go to Germany is the Robert Bosch Foundation Fellowship, which is funded by the Robert Bosch Foundation in Germany. It's a long-standing program over 30 years, and um, it is this year undergoing a major change. So all the information you see on the slide um, is only tentative. It will definitely change. But um, what it has been before was a fully funded program sending young professionals with a degree and some work experience in their field to Germany for high-level um, professional assignments at leading organizations in Germany um, and thematic seminars and an intensive language course. Uh, so most of those components will still be in place, but they are um, raising the age limit to 40, where it was 34 be um, before, um, and will probably ra um, yeah, change um, the finances, uh, raise the finances a bit and uh, the duration um, make it a little shorter. So um, we will post the information as soon as we have it on the website, but I just wanted to let you know that it's there and that um, it's, it's undergoing a change. Um, apart from this, um, our internship abroad programs, a lot of them are also um, welcoming graduates to apply for uh, participation. I will not repeat what I said before, but just to mention that um, that MGIP uh, at the Landtag would be interesting for grad students um, in public policy or related fields. Um, ISD would be um, wonderful for masters and PhD students in a technical field in sciences, um, as long as they're still enrolled for the duration of the program. Um, and internship placements for um, graduate students in all fields of study who are interested in individualized placements in Germany. <clears throat> and then, of course, independent work abroad uh, for graduate students who have already found their internship in Germany, um, but would like assistance with the work authorization. Okay. Thank you, Katia. Um, and I'm going to move on there to um, actually another flagship program of ours. Uh, this is for uh, graduate students, as the name implies, our study scholarship um, opportunities for graduates. And this is a fantastic opportunity for anyone who um, is thinking about um, doing study or research in Germany at the graduate level. Actually, this is funding for um, the first year or second year of a complete master's degree. Um, that can be in combination with a degree in the U.S. Um, or Canada, or if the student actually intends to do a complete degree in Germany. Um, again, the funding scheme is quite healthy and um, is about 750 euros a month, and there's uh, an allowance allowed for travel and for health insurance. Um, there is a, um, a separate um, graduate study scholarship for those who are, who are doing fine arts. Uh, or acting, um, music, whether it be an instrument or singing, uh, and information for that opportunity or those opportunities can be found on our website. Uh, it's a different application process, but the funding is similar. Uh, in addition to our RISE program, we do have a companion program for graduate students and, and everyone who's ABD, again in the same disciplines as the RISE undergraduate, and what's different about this opportunity is not just the amount of funding, as you can see, it's a little higher, but also the fact that the student works in a company as opposed to working um, at a university. And the duration of the internship is, in fact, or can be longer. The student is allowed to stay for up to uh, 
six months for that internship. That is also um, a highly competitive program, but one that has yielded uh, really amazing results in terms of network building and um, acquiring an international understanding of what research collaboration means. There is also for um, students who are um, grad students who are pursuing a PhD in Germany or PhD students themselves, postdocs, there is funding available for research and uh, these research opportunities have broken out, it's not here on the slide, but into short term and long term, um, each of which has a different deadline. But as you can see, the higher you go up sort of the academic food chain within DAD, the higher the amount of funding that's available with the understanding that the student has actually acquired a great number of skills um, as an academic and therefore should be accommodated, I'm sorry, accommodated appropriately. Um, in addition, we also have funding um, not to uh, leave out those who are interested in studying the German language, of course. We do have research grants in German studies, those are not on the slides here. But we do have a fantastic opportunity for those who are not studying German studies for graduate students in other disciplines to um, study German. Now, again, you can see the amount of funding there. The student has to demonstrate that he or she has taken um, at least three level of three semesters of college German in order to participate. But it's really a great way for students of other disciplines to learn um, or improve, I should say, their German. Uh, we have some opportunities available in other disciplines. Uh, here's an example of an opportunity available for those who are studying German. I'm sorry, not German, but law. Um, there is a law school opportunity available for second and third year law students in Germany. We have other disciplines that I don't have slides for, for example, at the undergraduate level and graduate level for students in communications and media um, where they can do an internship as well. Uh, please have a look at our website for more information. So I'm going to bring, um, pass the microphone back to Katja, who's going to look at sort of the, what we call the university level, which is really um, faculty and um, beyond. Thank you. So we, um, we have two customized programs for higher, we should say higher, higher education institutions in general, to include community colleges as well. Um, so the first is uh, our custom study tours. So we offer customized faculty-led study tours for the professional topic of interest um, in Germany. We can customize them to a variety of fields given our network in Germany, um, usually accommodating groups of 15 to 20 people for the duration of one to three weeks. They all have a professional focus, um, including site visits to companies, um, meetings at public institutions, but also um, we include cultural elements that we find very important to complement the professional experience. Um, so we welcome all fields, but especially um, are encouraging the STEM fields to apply for study tours. And for instance, this summer we are organizing a study tour for STEM majors at two historically black colleges and, and universities in Atlanta, which is funded by an Atlanta-based foundation, um, and we're very excited about that. Um, so we definitely also encourage, um, we do, apart from that, we encourage community colleges also to apply for study tours in Germany. Next. Our second program is um, custom internship programs. So aside from our general internship placements open to students from all universities and institutions, uh, we offer customized internship programs for individual institutions in order to better accommodate their needs for their students. Amongst those, summer internship programs are usually the top choice um, given the timeline of the academic year here but um, we also accommodate semester and full-year programs. What we do for these are to design their custom internship programs in close consultation with faculty and staff from either individual departments, study abroad offices, career service centers, and others such as disability offices. Um, some of our current partners um, we can discuss in the um, FAQ section. Um, and we, we, can, we can talk about this uh, actually in the FAQ. Um, we, what entrains it. So, and as a standard, it includes um, the internship placements um, and the and um, support before, during, and after the program. But we can also customize the elements to include more services. Okay. And um, speaking of FAQ, thank you for bringing that up, Katja. 
it's looking quite meager there. So we have a number of questions, of course, we have um, um, to ask each other, but we would, of course, welcome questions from you. So feel free um, to shoot Leslie Harlson, our moderator, a couple of questions, and I'll continue from there. Um, so we do have a number of opportunities, as you can see, that I'm going to talk about briefly. Uh, and the first of which is, is called Germany Today, which is a fantastic opportunity for um, basically administrators, anyone who's involved with policy, it could be faculty, it could be international officers, um, it could be, we've had chancellors, we've had state um, senators come. It's to bring a group over to Germany to learn about German higher education in the European context. And it's a wonderful informational familiarization tour that lasts about a week usually and visits a number of cities, sometimes Berlin, Bonn, Brussels, Munich, um, etc. Uh, the way it works is that um, the participants, meaning you, would, per, would pay for the transatlantic fare and once you arrive in Germany, DAD uh, picks up the rest. Um, this tour usually goes in June, so the deadline for this year, of course, has long passed, but please keep that in mind for next year. We also, order, we also provide some funding for those of you who are putting together a, a study visit um, to Germany. Uh, we provide some seed money to get that program off the ground. Um, as you can see, the maximum amount of funding from us would be just shy of about 10,000 euros, but generally it's a group of, of 10 to 15 students who would go for 7 to 12 days to Germany to explore an academic topic, usually in conjunction with um, a university or research institute on, on the ground in Germany where there is a demonstrator interaction with not just faculty but also with students. Um, it's really a wonderful way for actually for many people to test a, a potential summer program with a German partner. We also provide, again, learning German. I've talked about this already, so I'm not going to go into great detail, but um, there is funding for uh, those of you who are on faculty, um, who hold the equivalent of a PhD to study German in Germany, um, to, to take an intensive language course. Of course, we encourage that, um, the acquisition and learning and, and improvement of the German language. Um, and similar to some of the opportunities at the undergraduate level, I'm sorry, at the graduate level, there is funding available for full-time faculty who've been on staff for at least two years to um, pursue a, a level of research in Germany for up to three months. And that test can be in, in a variety of institutions. It doesn't have to be the university, it can be in an archive, uh, a lab, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there is a companion program sort of to round off the portfolio of, of RISE opportunities, and that's called RISE Worldwide. And RISE Worldwide basically brings in um, German undergraduate students in the fields that you can see on the slide to work at a German, I'm sorry, a U.S. or Canadian lab um, for up to three months, usually around the summer, late summer, uh, perhaps ending in the early fall. They come funded. We're always looking for potential hosts, so please keep that in mind or put that on your calendar. The databases submit potential projects to host students uh, from Germany will go live sometime in October. Uh, the great thing about that is they do bring another perspective to your research team and they also come funded. So you would not have to worry about that. Uh, we also have a, um, another tour which would be of interest to various scientists or engineers on campus. Uh, and this tour usually happens in December where we every year uh, investigate a different theme. It could be environmental, it could be engineering, it could be uh, medical, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and we bring scientists, administrators from that discipline to Germany to explore with partners um, over the course of a week what research means on the ground in Germany, what it means in Europe, and where there might be potential for research collaboration. Um, that announcement in terms of A, what the discipline is, and B, how you can apply, usually um, come up with, uh, usually is, are, are announced sometime in the early fall around September or October. So again, please put that on your calendar. And to sort of round out the portfolio, um, there is a fantastic opportunity if you are looking to 
somehow facilitate financially faculty exchanges. That is bringing faculty to you from Germany or vice versa, bringing faculty from the US or Canada to Germany. There are funding schemes available on both sides of the Atlantic. So if this is of interest to you, by all means, check out our website. So um, Katja is going to talk a bit about the, the additional resources. Um, and I think with the common mistakes she'll talk about, we'll also talk about the application process from each perspective. So Katja? Yes, thank you. Um, so a common, what, what, what is always good to know, um, or what is a common misperception is that um, the idea that um, fellowship, fully funded programs, fellowships are always preferable over um, fee-based programs, but it really depends on, um, on the fields where very much like in the U.S., um, some, some professional fields um, pay really well for internships, some um, have limited funds and some are not able to pay much at all, um, like the nonprofit world, for example, or the arts. So, um, so it really depends. So some fellowships, um, participants may, may easily um, have enough to, to cover for all living expenses in Germany. But then again, in some placements, for, especially for technical and engineers, um, sciences, some in, in, business, in the business world and finance, um, some students really get highly paid internships. So um, at the end of the day, they might uh, just get as much or sometimes even more than um, through the fellowship programs. So it really, I really want you to reconsider the idea that, um, that fee-based programs are um, financial loss and that um, there's no, there, there are no, no possibilities at all for, um, for students to go and, on, on fee-based placement programs. And also in addition to that... Um, if, I could just, um, if I could just jump in there for a second, I think that's a very interesting point in general in terms of and, and helping the student understand um, what it means to participate in study abroad or research abroad and what impact that might have financially to look at whether they come with funding or without. We always encourage them, as do you, to really look at what are the longer term goals and what are the longer term gains versus the perceived shorter term lo financial losses. Anyway, Thank you. I complete, yeah, completely agree with that. It's definitely an investment in their future, um, but it, it's still understandable that some students might be concerned about their finances. So um, what I should add to that is that um, apart from our funded fellowship programs, the Congress Bundestag Youth Exchange, the Culture Vistas Fellowship, uh, the WISP um, program in Baden-Württemberg, and the Bosch Foundation Fellowship, we also offer financial aid for students specifically for that reason, to allow them to, do, to go abroad on internship placements. Um, so we have, this, we have a, the Culture Vistas Scholarship Fund, which we um, established from Culture Vistas. Um, it's our own internal Culture Vistas financial aid for our participants. And we give preference to students who go on low-paid or non-paid internships abroad. Um, the fund is need-based, so all participants can apply, and those who need the fund to offset the cost of living abroad, uh, travel, rent, and so on. Um, usually get it. Um, and in addition to that, for some of our internship placement programs in Germany um, ha give the opportunity of optional language training programs um, of a language course before the start of the internship. So for that one, we also partner with our uh, with the Karl Duisberg Foundation in Germany um, and the Karl Duisberg Centers in Germany um, to enroll students in, in, in free language courses. So we, each year we have a limited amount of free language courses available that we can then offer our students who go on internship placements to Germany. So that's something very important to, to, to know and to understand and also communicate to students that there's definitely, there are definitely op opportunities and, and ways to, to make the internship placements work and to really offset the cost of living um, and be able to have this experience, which is extremely beneficial for their career development. That's great. And, and actually, I've just, um, I'm, I'm, I'm interrupting you because we're both being interrupted and, and delighted to see from Leslie that we have lots of questions now. So I guess I should have, careful what you wish for, right? So um, I think maybe, Katya, maybe if each of us could take one minute just to talk about our respective application process. I think that maybe would take care of a few questions. Correct me if I'm wrong, Leslie. Um, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll start then since I, I, I hijacked the mic here. Um, so uh, what I would say is that, um, first of all, um, our applications, except for RISE, are, are pretty, pretty much the same. Um, all of our applications are merit-based. They're not need-based, unfortunately. But um, 
They consist of, generally speaking, an application form uh, and much like other opportunities, a, um, a recommendation letter and really what's critical is the statement of purpose. That is what the, you intend or your student intends to do is in sync with where you are, where you want to be and where you've been. And, and how that, whatever the experience in Germany is, how that's going to enrich and really strengthen you professionally, academically, however you want to define that. And of course, academics, your academic record uh, is very important. Um, we do not have interviews, I would say, for 99% of our opportunities. So that's a separate process than what you might experience with cultural vistas. And as I mentioned, for the RISE programs, all of that do is done online. And then maybe when it comes down to a final candidate for an internship that the potential host might consider calling the students just to have a quick chat on the phone. Okay, so I've just rushed through that, Katja. Now it's your turn. Would you like to talk a bit about cultural Okay, vistas? sure, yes. Um, so the application process is, it really depends on the program, but in general what they have in common is um, that students submit the, the standard application forms, their academic records, um, letters of recommendation from a professor and um, a former employer um, or internship host in the U.S. who can speak to their um, professional qualifications. Um, and an, and an essay in which they outline, which they have to outline why they want to go to Germany specifically. And this is something, Peter, that um, I agree with you that we, where we've seen, or where we really encourage students to think really very much about why Germany. This is what we're interested in. When we receive a lot of applications from students who just want to go abroad, but why do they, why do they want to go to Germany? So that they really need to be aware of that the um, Germany is a location for the, in their professional field, how their internship in Germany and the experience will uh, what will that uh, benefit, how they will benefit um, in the long term and really focus on, on why Germany. So then after we've received the applications, we, um, we have phone interviews usually with the students. Um, and then it really depends on the placement. The placements usually, for the placement programs, um, the placements start in January. So the application deadlines are between October and December. Um, and then the placements really start in January and you, when students go um, for the summer. Okay. Great. Thanks so much, Katya um, and Peter. And the first question I, or Peter, maybe you can advance to the next slide. And the resources that are on here, everyone will have emailed to them, so you can check out those websites um, at your leisure. It's just a few websites with um, databases for other funding opportunities for organizations besides ours, as well as uh, further information on studying and researching in Germany. So with that, um, Katja, the first question is, can you be a recent graduate and apply for internships with Cultural Vistas? Because the work authorization requirements in Germany changed uh, last fall, um, right now we, cannot, we, we, we can't accept recent graduates um, for the internship placement programs, but we, can, uh, we do encourage them um, to postpone their graduation date, which a lot of universities are um, are um, willing to accommodate, or if they're transferring to a different institution um, to in, to early enroll in the other institutions so that they are really, um, really enrolled. Um, in the future, moving forward, we are, we are currently exploring opportunities and ways that we can accommodate um, recent graduates again, uh, but nothing is definite yet, um, and I don't want to make any promises that we then cannot keep, so for now we, we cannot accept recent graduates. But hopefully this will, will change in the future. Thanks, Katja. Um, Peter, this question is for you. Can you explain a little bit more about the Fine Arts program? I assume that that is the DED Graduate Scholarship for Fine Arts. Yes, so um, the application process is actually, the students would have to submit a portfolio. If you go online to, on our website under um, Graduate Opportunities, you'll see a, 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 a much more detailed description. But a quick synopsis is, as I said, the student would have to submit a portfolio here and what that portfolio looks like is described on the website. The portfolio and the application itself are then forwarded on to our colleagues in Bonn. Um, it's one of the few programs, the RISE programs and the, this particular scholarship scheme are all administered, um, or I should say the, the, um, the applications are screened by our colleagues in Bonn and um, actually the as far as I understand, the screening committee in Bonn or the selection committee is comprised of faculty members in the arts um, from uh, various uh, art schools in Germany 
and are then reviewed in a pool of, of applications from all over the world, in fact. How that differs, just to go back to the application process here, that um, the applications for other scholarship schemes are actually reviewed by selection committees here that are comprised of um, faculty from the US, Canada, and Germany. And um, in the case, let's use the undergraduate scholarship, if you have a student who is a biology major applying to study abroad in Germany, um, his or her application would not necessarily be judged by a, a uh, um, let's say, a musicologist, but would in fact be judged, or I should say, be looked at first by a biologist who would have a better understanding of the discipline. And um, so every discipline that's represented in the application pool or the applicant pool would be represented uh, on the body of um, people reviewing. Great. Thanks, Peter. Um, the next question I'll just answer real quickly. It's to, the person asked to get a better understanding of the funding. Can you give an idea of what the average cost of living is per month? And the German government says that a student needs 650 euros a month to live off of, and that is to cover rent and food and local transportation and books, not you know big travels every weekend across the continent. But the basic needs of a student can be covered. Uh, by 650 euros. And uh, one thing that's great about Germany too is so much a subsidized student life is. So students that are matriculated at a university get a semester ticket which allows them to travel for free and public transportation. So especially if you're in New York or San Francisco like us, the 650 euros a month is sort of a joke, like our rent would be more than that. But it really does go quite far in Germany. So you know from the DAD side that if you have a grant from us, in just about every case it covers um, you know, your basic basic costs, so you don't have to worry about that. And I know with cultural visits, it depends on the program, but um, that's it just depends, sort of but, um, and I'm glad you, you brought up that or uh, that you transferred the question because um, it, it really does depend and <clears throat> a lot of the other, our fellowships are usually, all the fellowships that, that I've mentioned earlier, um, they're funded so they include um, the complete the round trip uh, transportation, housing in Germany, um, a lot of them have free housing and really cover for all of the fixed costs so um, when students go on those they, um, they basically have to just bring their enough funds for their own spending money and additional travel and so on. Um, and just about the scholarship, um, that's the Cultural Scholarship Fund. Uh, last year we gave 38,000, a little over the 38,000 to 34 participants to really cover those um, living expenses and we found that, that it definitely made it, um, made it possible for them to, um, to live in Germany without any, any major concessions. Great. Thanks, Katja. Um, the and next if question. I may add, um, there's, there, oh, Leslie, just one quick point. Um, if you um, go on the Study in Germany website, that's study-in.de, there's a fantastic grid where you can look, or, or interactive website where you can look at the cost of living, and I think it's in 40 or 50 cities in Germany, just to give you a sense. Great. Thank you. Um, the next question is from, uh, this is something we kind of get a lot, it's from a mid-career professor who used to do research in Germany, has been, uh, and since then, working, working mostly with Italian, but now the current research project brings that person back to German and German culture. So the question is sort of, this person's language skills has deteriorated, and also um, he's only coming back to Germany after a long stint, and what are the best opportunities uh, for that? And um, Peter, I'll just jump in here real quick and then you can fill in what I've missed, but the what point that I want to make is it does, you don't have to be a proven dramatophile for your whole life to be eligible for, for our grants. We really just want um, you to have a need to go to Germany, and if you're coming back to something that's German, uh, that's, that's absolutely no problem, and whether that's you applying for the faculty language grant to do four weeks of language study in Germany to bring you back up to the level you need, that's great or if you're applying for the faculty research grant for one to three months to do some of the in-country research. Um, they're, they're, you're absolutely eligible for either of those and we would encourage you to apply. Just don't feel shy because you haven't been dealing with Germany um, recently. And I would agree with you. Thank you so much, Leslie. I mean, a couple of wonderful resources for you to think about. The first of which I hate to say, I know the website, but I will. The companion website is Research in Germany. And that's you research go back. Why don't you go back one slide, Peter? Okay. Okay, so research, um, there we go. Um, re thank you, Leslie. Research in Germany is actually a wonderful opportunity which, or, or website which illustrates everything you can think about relating to research in Germany, but also 
has links to some of our partner organizations like the German Research Foundation, the, the GFG, the German acronym, or the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation, all of which um, offer a variety of opportunities at different levels, different funding schemes to pursue some level of research in Germany. So, uh, and also you, for many of the opportunities, not all of them of course, sometimes the language of, of business in the research unit may be English actually because there are so many internationals. So, um, we, I don't know what your discipline is, but by all means look at these resources and if you have any questions feel free to reach out to us at the contact information here. Thank you. The next question is one we get a lot, so if I can ask both of you to briefly address this, and again, we have a lot more questions, so if you can be as uh, succinct as possible, that'd be great. Uh, and that is about how, how likely are students or faculty to get these grants, so what's the selection ratio? And I know it's very hard to sort of generalize, but maybe Katya, if we can start with you and you can talk a little bit about um, selection process or selection ratios. Sorry, I didn't get the first, but can you repeat that? Yes, um, what, what are selection ratios? So how likely are people to get each of your grants? How many are awarded versus number of applicants? I can't give you any specific number, unfortunately, but um, in terms of the competitiveness, the, the fellowship programs, the Bosch Foundation fellowship program is the most competitive, um, where we get at least 10 times more applications that we can, um, yeah, than is possible. Um, the CBYX programs are quite competitive as well. The Culturalistas Fellowship uh, was a new program this year, so um, there's more potential there. Yeah, but in terms of the um, of the internship placements, we we try to accommodate um, a large variety of students. Um, also, students who are not the who don't necessarily have a 3.8 GPA. We so we really try to be inclusive, um, and it really comes down to the to where we can place the candidates. So um, high. Um, high-profile students um, in finance, we, we will have no trouble placing in, in high-level institutions in Frankfurt, for example. Um, so we really try to make it more inclusive and to really give a broad variety of students the access to internships abroad. And then the GPA, I guess, and the competitiveness really plays down in terms of, the, of where we can place them, what is realistic to place them. Um, and we really make sure that we, all the candidates that we select um, are realistic, that we can place them realistically in Germany in their career field there that they envision. Great. Thanks. Peter? And, and, I would, and ours are, I mean, they, they vary, but generally speaking, it's one out of every four to one out of every six, depending upon the year, the number of applications, and the strength uh, within each discipline. So that would be my general number. Great. Sounds about right. Um, the next question is for Peter, and it's about the Germany Today program. And uh, can you talk a little about who that's open to, and do they have to be affiliated with a university? Uh, it's open to, uh, actually, so the, I'll answer the second question first, and that's no, because, for example, we've had people from um, state institutions who've participated, as I mentioned, we've had a, a state senator, actually a couple state senators and, and provincial MPs participate, so that would be my short answer to that. So really, it's geared toward um, an official, whether it be uh, on campus, some type of a policy maker, there's a general term for you, um, someone in administration, somebody on faculty, it could be a dean, it could be a chancellor, it could be a president, it could be the head of an international office, um, it could be uh, a study abroad advisor. I mean, we've had really the gamut participate. Um, and it's really, I guess, geared toward somebody who could benefit from uh, learning about, really immersing in uh, understanding the German higher education system vis-a-vis uh, -vis the EU, Bologna, you name it. Um, and it's, I have to say by far a very dynamic group of alumni. Uh, what's really wonderful about these groups is that they're bringing people together who probably never would have, not never, but most likely would not have crossed paths and provided them with a very strong working group afterwards where, where the alumni have been very active in, in, in staying in touch and actually implementing things German in their respective institutions. Great. Thanks, Peter. Uh, the next question is for both Peter and Katya, and that is if you could just run through quickly which programs are and are not available to students in Canada. And I, I took the, the liberty as that question came in to go through ours quickly, and it looks like Thanks, Leslie, you um, tell me all of, I know, that's, that's hard <laughs> off the top of your head. Um, that for, 
the DAD side, the MGIP grant for um, intern in the Bundestag, is, I believe, is just for American students, and everything yeah. else is for Canadian. And to uh, yeah. just to explain why, um, and we, our office officially represents the U.S. and Canada, and why that particular program is not um, available to Canadians, it's because of the funding scheme. I'm sorry, where the funding is come from, coming from for that particular scholarship or internship. All of our funding comes from different ministries in the German government, and as far as I know, and I guess I'm being recorded, so don't quote me, it doesn't make sense, but I think any money that came from ERP or the Marshall Plan is geared toward U.S. students. That's just the way it is. And actually, um, I just, I, I think that one was where I get a little confused. The MGIP, I just double-checked, um, it can be used for Canadian students. It's the intern exchange that I was thinking of that we actually didn't even discuss. So, okay. um, <laughs> just to confuse everybody. Right. Actually, we're going to confuse everyone again. I'm sorry, Leslie, but the intern exchange will be opened up to Canadians this summer. So. Okay, well, then. So then we're, we're batting a thousand here, then. It's all yes. Canadians. Well, so. we'll pass it over to Katja, then. Okay, no, okay sure. So yeah. maybe I should tell you which programs are specifically for U.S. students or permanent residents only. So um, it's similar to what Peter said in terms of the funding. So where, depending where the sources, resources come from, um, we, have to, we can only make them available for U.S. Um, citizens or um, permanent residents um, who are students enrolled in institution. So those are the Congress Bundestag Youth Exchanges only for American students or um, permanent residents. The Kachi Research Fellowship as well. Um, MGIP is for both Amer American and Canadian, both U.S. American and Canadian American. Um, and yeah, all the other, other all the other ones are pretty much open to international students as well. So only those with the limitation. And the um, and the scholarship funds, the Kachi Research Scholarship Fund is also only um, open to, it only can fund U.S. citizens or um, permanent residents. Great, thank you. Um, the next question uh, for both of you is, can you speak to any pre-departure orientation provided for the students? Uh, who's the who has the responsibility of that pre-departure? Um, Katja, would you like to start? Yeah, yeah sure. So oh, in terms okay. of um, yeah. of our programs, it, the, in terms of the, so we provide orientation for all of the um, participants. Uh, certainly it's easier for groups, um, for fellowship programs like CBYX and the Kachi Visas Fellowship where we have a more cohesive group. Um, so we, for, for these uh, fellowship programs we do um, in-person orientation seminars here in New York City in our office. Um, then once they get to Germany we have an orientation seminar there with our local, um, with our local representative. Um, and then once they return, um, we have an info, um, we have a follow-up. Uh, some programs include a service learning project, and, and the Kachi Vistas Fellowship also has um, a virtual seminar um, that preceded the orientation. So, um, and the other ones, the internship placement programs where we send students on individual internship placements all throughout the year, uh, we provide a virtual um, information and virtual orientation and information mailings. And also when they come back to really, sh to really give them the tools of um, utilizing their experience um, most efficiently to market their um, market to potential employers um, and so on. Uh, and that's uh, probably where we differ somewhat. For, for, and it really varies from program to program because we are, generally speaking, we, as we do have internship programs, but most of what we offer is funding. So, but we do have, um, for some of our programs, pre-departure webinars, much like what you're experiencing now. Um, and in Germany, uh, when I think about the undergraduate scholarships, the study scholarships, and particularly the RISE programs, all of the grantees are brought together in one or more German cities for a long weekend, um, um, not only to meet each other, but to learn about a specific topic. Uh, the RISE program, most of the, what is considered an orientation would happen uh, as far as pre-departure is, 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 is dispersed either, as I said, via a webinar or um, online where the student would receive information in advance. So it is not as um, in the sense of um, you know, face-to-face uh, beforehand, before leaving the continent, organized as, let's say, what um, Katja has just described. Great. Um, thanks, Peter. The next question, maybe I'll bounce right back to you, Peter, and that is uh, if you could speak briefly about race relations in Germany and how, what, what the experience is for African-American students. Thank you. That's, it's an interesting experience. We work very closely with diversity abroad, actually with a number of institutions, to promote um, Germany as a destination 
for um, non-traditional students, however they would define themselves. And, um, and so I think it varies. Uh, I think that uh, one important statistic to, to point out is that uh, a quarter of the uh, almost 250,000 students in Germany are international students. And correct me if I'm wrong, Katya or Leslie, but I believe almost one out of every 10 students matriculated at a German university does not hold a German passport. So in that sense, um, there is a very dynamic international community. Um, I'm not going to, you know, I'd be lying to say that there haven't been problems, that there are not problems, but I think that um, it is a very welcoming society in many ways. I think much like traveling in this country or in Canada, um, that you have to keep, that you have to know that there's a, a level of awareness one needs to have regardless of what you're doing or where you're going. But I think, um, generally speaking, it is a very safe and welcoming community. Um, if you do have students who are concerned, we do have young ambassadors or research ambassadors who, from their own personal testimonials, could perhaps help your students in making um, to, you know, the appropriate decision. Thank you. And to, to add on to that, um, we, through the Congress Bundestag Youth Exchange, we're sending a lot of African Americans to Germany, and the experience has been really wonderful. And we, it's not the case that um, that the idea is that um, urban centers are are more accommodating to diverse um, students than than um, than rural centers. We really have found placements for for students in rural communities where they were very very much included in the community and very welcomed, and um, people were really open to learn about their background and the United States. So it's I really um, second uh, Peter here that it's it's it really is a welcoming society, and um, it really depends on um, on some cities or some some areas that might be um, particularly welcome, and others that might be more neutral. Um, so, but w one thing that I think we should mention to that is um, that both the DAD and Culture Vistas um, has a wonderful basis of alumni, of students who came back uh, from their experience in Germany and who are alumni who are connected either in, as um, ambassadors or as informal ambassadors and who we're always very happy and willing to um, connect with you um, to do info sessions or to meet with, get together with prospective students um, who might be interested in going to Germany and really talk about these. Um, about some of these issues, especially being having diverse background, um, we have a great base of alumni that is very eager also to to talk to uh, to students who might be interested in going. So that's definitely something you should uh, connect with us um, about. Great, thank you, Katya. Uh, we just have uh, one more quick question. That is, uh, this person at UNC Chapel Hill is organizing a student teaching in Hamburg for education majors and grad students. And are there any sort of funding opportunities for that kind of program that will last for four weeks? So I don't know which of you would like to start. I, I, I think it takes a lot to catch my, but let me just, through us, I, there's no funding through us. Um, what I would ask you, to, there are, well not for four weeks, because there's funding available for, for either joint degrees. Um, have, I, Fulbright, I don't know if Fulbright has money available for that. Um, there might be under other funding schemes. What I would ask, if, if you could shoot Leslie your um, name and email address, uh, because this will take a little more research, because that's, nothing is coming to mind now, but I, I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but we can certainly try to help you find it. Katya, does anything come to mind? Not, not a program that we are doing. We wouldn't be able to find it just, um, just like that. Okay, so if you could just send um, Leslie or, or Katya or both a, a quick email, we'd be more than happy to, to put our heads together and see if we can come up with other, some other funding sources for you. Okay, great. Um, and with that, it looks like um, all of our questions have been addressed and only a few minutes over time. So thank you to everybody for your questions, for sticking with us. Um, we really enjoyed hearing from you. It's always good to know which specific questions come up um, time and time again, and we should, uh, we'll should we continue to work to integrate those into, into our presentations. Uh, yeah, so all of you look in your inboxes for a follow-up email with a PDF of the presentation you've seen today, as well as a recording that you can share with any of your colleagues who were not able to make it. And with that, any uh, final words from our panelists? Just thank, thank you for you taking so much. the time with us. Yes. It was wonderful. And I really, yeah, it's a great pleasure. And we really hope to, 
to get you interested in, in um, these opportunities. Great. Oh, and one final thing. I can't believe I forgot to mention this. Please um, look in your inbox as well for a link to a follow-up survey. We really want to tailor these presentations so that they're most useful for you, and we are giving away two $25 gift cards um, for those of you uh, that, and, uh, that complete the, um, the survey. We will do a drawing, and two of you will receive a gift card. So please do fill out that survey. We really appreciate your feedback. And we appreciate you taking part today and wishing you all a nice weekend. Bye. Thank you. The organizer.